40 years. Amazing, innit? 2024 marks the big 4-0 for Transformers. If the last few months have been anything to go by, Hasbro and Takara clearly have plans for such a grand -us occasion. As for me, in the last few months of 2023, 12 polls were held on my YouTube community page. I picked a Transformers line, three toys from it, and you all voted which one I should cover this year. The Legacy poll wasn't the first created, but it was the only one to end in a tie, between Alita 1 and Point Blank. I chose Point Blank, as the guys had little attention, let's face it. His biggest role was in the Headmasters anime, as the leader of the three Autobot Target Masters. This is the character's first figure in over three decades. 1986 onwards saw a surge in alien and futuristic vehicles for the Generation 1 line. Point Blank is a sleek Cybertronian racer, one where the fenders strike past the front bumper like daggers, a dynamic design trait almost rivaled by the backswept tail fins. There's also plenty of details to go around, from standard car features like the headlights, hood vents, and wheel rims, to the molded greeblings such as on the chassis or within the cockpit. The window hinges up if you want a better look. Speaking of, the window is translucent blue, instead of solid blue-grey as is usually depicted. The rest of the deco is what you'd expect from Point Blank, primarily red, bright blue, and black, with silver accents. Sadly, this lacks the flame decals of the character's original figure. No room for them in their intended spot, really. What is at the back is an engine sculpted onto the car, but that wasn't always the plan. Throughout this review, you'll find that Legacy Point Blank is an unfortunate victim of cost-cutting. There are a few concepts that were ultimately dropped for the final product, the first of which being a removable engine-slash-gun, not unlike the G1 Toys accessory. Luckily, Point Blank is still packing, thanks to his target master partner, Peacemaker, which, depending on the continuity, is either an organic alien in a robotic exosuit, or a small transformer. This little guy sports the red and black colour scheme of the original minifigure, plus the same moulded head, chest and limb details, now with extra paint. He's just as poseable too. The gun mode is what you'd expect from a Target Master, a block with a gun barrel and limbs sprawled across, though the mechanical details help the look a little. Twin rectangular tabs underneath allow you to plug it at the rear of the car, covering quite the gap back there. There's also a circular port each side of the car for either post. Yeah, more than one post. Put a pin in that. For now, I'll say that Peacemaker is a decent bonus figure, but kind of pales as target master partners go, even next to the humanoid battle masters from Siege, which had functioning shoulders and hips. But he shares one thing with them. Legacy Point Blank's transformation mostly works. However, these ball-jointed red pieces can pop off due to being pegged on pretty tight to the robot feet. Point Blank's robot mode has pretty much all the character's hallmarks. The rear unfolds into the legs, with the spoiler halves as knee pads. The windscreen slash roof rests on his torso, albeit upside down compared to characters like Wheeljack, Trax, and many others. And the fenders form wide shoulder pads, which as you can imagine, has had fans begging for potential retools of this mold. The head aims for both the Marvel comic and the American G1 cartoon. You have a singular central backswept fin and solid visor, versus twin antenna each side of the helmet and separate optics. Some are bothered by this as, again, he was more prominent in the Headmasters, but it's nice and crisply sculpted for what it's going for. Though where looks are concerned, I do take issue with the waist assembly. With no guard, it draws attention to how wide his hips are, complete with those exposed joints. Ugly. Also, this is minor, but they went literal with the cost cutting, hence those rectangular indents in his calves. The figure's back was reworked too, but it seems inconsequential. Point Blank's articulation is a mixed bag. The head is on a swivel, as is the waist. His hips are universal. 
you have a restricted thigh swivel, but thanks to the leg cavity, a pretty epic knee bend. Don't forget ankle tilts. As for the arms, the shoulders hinge up and are on a vertical swivel. There's also a horizontal swivel below the elbow. At first it looks like he has short biceps, but a side view shows they're just covered by the fenders. Between the wheel and forearm kibble, the elbows don't have the greatest bend. Also, budget cuts strike again, as with the forearm and hand being one solid piece of plastic. There's no wrist swivel, something even the G1 toy had apparently. Well, with the kibble I question how effective it would be anyway. But it doesn't end there. In the Headmaster's anime, the Target Master partners, in gun mode, weren't simply held in the larger bot's hands. The hands stowed away, and the guns connected to the wrists. Given the post at the back of Peacemaker's weapon mode, you can guess what they had planned for this set. Not that the post can't be used at all. I've said it before that it's cool how the Target Master characters are getting attention in the modern era. Sadly, for what was supposedly his big comeback after 35 years, Legacy Point Blank, even with Peacemaker, doesn't quite shoot straight. We sometimes say, this figure needed some revisions before it hit the shelves, but here, we saw those revisions, and it stings all the more. Maybe the Voyager price point would have fixed some of these issues, as this set was not without potential. I've been fluctuating on whether to give Point Blank a bronze or a silver. I'll say bronze for now. Though that could change, these rankings are never truly set in stone. I know we should mostly judge figures for what they are, but it's hard to ignore what could have been. <laughs> <laughs>